guys, it's Adele Harris, and this is another episode of the Refuse to Lose blog. Today, I am going off the grid a little bit to talk about a topic that I typically do not talk about. I don't go this route um, at all, but I believe this can add value to those of you watching. And if not add value, it's something that has to be said and needs to be said. And I felt into my heart that I wanted to recognize this person that is contributing in our world and our society in a dynamic way. LeBron James. LeBron James is an NBA player, superstar, all of these things. Um, if you're reading this, you know, probably you know that I've spent 30 years in the world of basketball and in sport, but I hardly ever will be championing anyone because I don't know them personally, right? I don't know what they do outside of the court. Uh, I don't know their behaviors and actions. So I, I really just watch from a spectator point of view and I really don't champion anyone in public. But this is the first time that I'm going to take a second to recognize the greatness that is LeBron James. And I'm not going to recognize him for any, any points he scored, any rebounds, any assists, any records broken, uh, no MVPs. Uh, I'm just going to recognize the fact that I believe that the essence of his character is really, really pure. I believe that he is trying to leave a legacy that extends way far beyond the sport of basketball. He has been intentional and deliberate about that over the last decade or so, um, more so than ever before I, I, that I've seen any other athlete in my lifetime. I know in past um, it was more common for athletes to stand out on other subjects and speak on them and um, you know use their platforms in another way, but LeBron James is doing something I think right now and his legacy will be told obviously in the next 20 to 30 to 40 years when he's no longer here, um, what he leaves behind. Right now, I just, this was, this was inspired by an Instagram post I saw from the National, um, the National Smithsonian, I can't even say it, um, African American Museum. I saw an IG post they had of how LeBron James was one of the initial contributors to the museum. And I went on to read that LeBron James donated $2.5 million for the African American Museum that is up in Washington, D.C. right now. A beautiful facility. I have not gone, but I've heard incredible things about it. Uh, a beautiful facility, but it caught me off guard like, wow, you know, that's, that's unique. I didn't know that. I wish Sports Center would tell us. Um, but I saw that he was donating some proceeds from his shoe that just came out a couple weeks ago to, to the museum. And I guess his contribution was for uh, a part of the museum that was going to share the stories of uh, Muhammad Ali and his contribution to the African-American plight and the African-American athlete and how he used his platform to stand up for something. Okay, you can agree or disagree with any other things that people want to stand up for their justice or how they uh, interpreted things that happened during their day and age. But LeBron James is standing up for something that is bigger than himself, <laughs> that is bigger than points and rebounds and contributions on the basketball floor. He's also proven to be a family man. Now, I don't like to talk about this stuff because you never know what's really going on in someone's home uh, until you pull back the curtain. But I will say this. He's managed for a long time to be able to keep himself clean of very negative um, images or things that may impact his overall uh, persona or what he's putting out there. So far as we know, over the last 15 years or however long he's been in the league, I don't even know, but over 15 years or so, he's tried to do it the right way. He's really tried to do it the right way because unless you try, unless you're intentional, unless you're deliberate, you don't do it right. <laughs> you fall flat on your face and you make those mistakes. So he's he's must have set out to get the right guidance. He's he's must have taken initiative to to get information from people who have succeeded or he's read some books or he's done something to make certain that he's taken this responsibility he has or this opportunity he has and he's chosen to say, you know what, I'm going to be a great basketball player, but I also want my legacy to be a great father, a great husband and a servant leader for my community. That's huge. And he's executing at a very, very high level. And that is greatness. I was watching an interview uh, this past, probably within the last 12 months, maybe, and the question was about criticism and, 
you know, the voices from the outside and how they get into the locker room. And obviously this is a common topic for professional athletes, but LeBron had the best answer. And it connected with me directly because this is something I've had to deal with on a smaller scale for sure, but I've had to deal with. And uh, he said, the man in, in the arena. The man in the arena is a speech given by former president uh, Theodore Roosevelt back in 1910. It's an incredible message. And I got it because it's the man in the arena is a part of a speech that I've also adopted as my language when dealing with criticism and voices from the outside. And so I want to share that with you if you don't know it, because it'll give you a little more insight of, of why I'm talking about LeBron James being being great. <laughs> um, but the speech goes, this part of the speech goes, it is not the critic who counts. It is not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. No, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without failure and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deed, who knows the great devotions and the great enthusiasms, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the high triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, fails while daring greatly, so that his place will never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I got that so much because there's so many voices of criticism and judgment on, on athletes, on people who, who get paid to perform in front of the crowd. And I think that's great, but you're fans for a reason. But here's the thing, I'm not talking about him as an athlete. You're criticizing a man who is starting uh, programs or, or has already started programs to send hundreds of kids to college. You know, to send kids to, co to send someone else's child to school, to create an opportunity for someone else to live a better life, to start uh, after school programs in his hometown, to, to donate $2.5 million so that the history and legacy of of an African-American culture of our people can be told over and over again, long after we are no longer here. That is the man in the arena whose face is marred with dust, sweat, and blood that you have no idea because a lot of you who talk are the cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And I get it, I get it. And I don't applaud him for putting a ball through a basket or being a six foot eight bulldozer beast who can pass it like magic and, and physical like Charles Barkley and dribbling at speed and all this stuff. I'm not applauding that. I'm applauding the fact that somewhere along the lines in the business model and plan became philanthropy, servanthood, and example and model of what a man is. I love it. I applaud it. I applaud greatness. So this week's blog is all about King James. Like it or not, you got to salute the king. Strive for greatness, king.